Hey everyone, welcome back with a new lecture from Accredited Laboratory. In the training course of method validation and measurement uncertainty calculation, and today's lecture will be around a very easy and fast way to calculate measurement uncertainty for any method. This lecture will be considered as the last lecture in this training course, and inshallah, at the end, there will be an example how to validate any method using Excel sheet and how to calculate measurement uncertainty also using Excel sheet. First, you should know what does it mean measurement uncertainty or uncertainty of the analytical measurement. Uncertainty of the analytical measurement means that how much you have a doubt with your analytical measurement. Because for every measurement, even the most careful one, there is a margin of doubt. This margin of doubt is the uncertainty of the measurement and should be quantified with the high confidence level because this margin of doubt will be added to the final result to compensate all effects coming from every step of the analytical measurement and you will ask yourself now is there any difference between errors and measurement uncertainty value that will be added to the final result yes there is a big difference between errors and measurement uncertainty value because errors are the difference between true and measured value as example for that if you spike any sample with a known concentration as example 10 bbb and you got result 5 bbb so there is a big difference between the true and measured value 5 bbb equal to 5 bbb so errors now equal to 5 bbb and recovery in this case will not be accepted According to any guideline, it will be 5 divided by 10, it will be 50 percentage. So recovery will not be accepted. And your result will not be true. So you should repeat the analysis again and again to remove the errors and get result which is closed to the true value. But measurement uncertainty is a value added to the final result to compensate all effects coming from every step of the analytical measurement from sampling up to running the sample on the instrument. So if you have any effect during your analysis, during your extraction, during your sampling, that effect will be added to the final result. So it will be compensated. And this is the measurement uncertainty. So errors should be removed. But measurement uncertainty should be added to the final result to compensate all effects coming from every step of the analytical measurement. And now how to quantify measurement uncertainty in a very easy and fast way. First, you should identify all sources of measurement uncertainty in the measurement from sampling up to running the sample on the instrument. And then you will estimate the size of uncertainty for each source. And after that, individual uncertainties from each source will be combined together to get overall uncertainty or expanded uncertainty. How to estimate the size of uncertainty for each source? After you will identify all sources of measurement uncertainty in the analytical measurement, how to estimate the size of uncertainty for each source? Uh, according to your chem guideline, two ways. You have type A evaluation and type B evaluation. First, type A evaluation. From type A evaluation, you will get two values. Measurement uncertainty due to precision that will come from repeatability and reproducibility. And measurement uncertainty due to bias that will come from trueness evaluation. As I mentioned before, that bias is the measure of trueness. Measurement uncertainty due to precision, it will come from repeatability and reproducibility. So you will make replicate analysis of samples spiked with different levels of concentration that will cover the range of interest or range of concentrations expected to be measured by the method for each target analyte, for each target analyte based on its maximum residue limit. How you can select this level of concentrations based on maximum residue limit or specification limit of the target analyte? As here in this example, if the target analyte maximum residue limit or specification limit equal to 100 BBB. Based on this, you can select different level of concentration low level, the lowest level that will be used as the minimum reporting limit or limit of quantitation, it will be 
it can be 10 BBB or 5 BBB. But as I mentioned before in the previous lectures, that you don't need to go for 1 or 0.1 BBB if your maximum residual limit is very high, 100 BBB. If you have maximum residual limit 10 BBB, you can go for 0.1 BBB or 0.5 BBB. But very high maximum residual limit, you can go for 10. If you divide 100 by 10, you will get 10 BBB or you can go for 5 BBB. It will be okay. Also, the second level that you will select it will be the mid level in between in between the lowest level and the highest level the third level it's better to be same like the maximum residual limit for the target analyte the highest level also better to be higher than the maximum residual limit to cover the range of interest to cover all concentrations expected to be measured by the method for this target analyte so for this target analyte we will select the lowest level 5 bb 50 bb it will be the mid level and 100 bb will be the third level which is the maximum residual limit for the target analyte and highest level will be higher than the maximum residual limit it can be 200 bb then 6 to 10 replicate of spike samples of samples spike with these selected concentrations for each level 6 to 10 replicate of sample spike with these selected concentrations will be analyzed and from this you will calculate for each level for each level you will calculate the average and the standard deviation for each level and from average and standard deviation you will calculate relative standard deviation relative standard deviation equal to as i mentioned before standard deviation divided by the average multiplied 200 and you should know that recovery for each individual result should be within the acceptable range according to the guideline you use so you will get relative standard deviation for each level relative standard deviation one for the low level relative standard deviation 2 for the mid level relative standard deviation 3 for the third level and relative standard deviation 4 for the highest level from these relative standard deviations you will get pooled relative standard deviation as i mentioned before which is equal to square root of relative standard deviation 1 square multiplied to n1 minus 1 degree of freedom for the lowest level and this is also for the lowest level plus relative standard deviation 2 square multiplied to n2 minus 1 for the second level and so on and you can have more than four levels if you want divided by degree of freedom for the lowest level plus degree of freedom for the second level and so on and this value pulled relative standard deviation will be considered as the measurement uncertainty value due to precision so this is the first value because that value express all variations coming from every step of measurement for short and long time scale because you include here repeatability and reproducibility so this value for the pooled relative standard deviation considered as the first value which is measurement uncertainty value due to precision after that you will calculate measurement uncertainty due to bias and that will be calculated from trueness evaluation because as i mentioned before bias is the measure of trueness and it's better to use a certified reference material which contains your target analytes you should analyze 6 to 10 replicate of this crm and you have the reference value for your target analyte in this crm in the certificate and you will get the results from the results you will calculate the standard deviation between all of these results and you should calculate the recovery for each for individual results recovery should be also within the acceptable range according to the guideline you use then you will calculate uncertainty uncertainty or standard uncertainty which equal to standard deviation divided by square root of n n number of replicates 6 to 10 replicates if you are if you did 10 replicates so it will be 10 standard deviation between all of these results then you will calculate relative standard uncertainty relative standard uncertainty which equal to uncertainty or standard uncertainty divided by mean or average of recovery you will get the average between all of these recoveries average of recovery multiplied to 100 
and relative standard deviation that will be considered as your measurement uncertainty value due to bias. So from type A evaluation, we calculated measurement uncertainty due to precision from repeatability and reproducibility. And we got from this pooled relative standard deviation that will be added to the combined uncertainty and measurement uncertainty due to bias from Tronis evaluation. And we got relative standard uncertainty also will be added to the combined uncertainty. And after that, we have type B evaluation and that comes from any source sources other than repeatability and you have in the lab other equipment such as balance microbiote standards all of these equipments comes with a certificate in this certificate you will find measurement uncertainty calculated but you will take this uncertainty from each equipment and it will be added to the combined uncertainty but it will not be added as it is it will be calculated also but you can consider only type a evaluation you can consider in your calculation of measurement uncertainty only type a evaluation because in type a evaluation you did extraction steps in short time scale and long time scale and you used all equipments used balance microbiot standards every equipment in the lab you use so you already include this in type a evaluation and the biggest amount will come also from type a evaluation so from type b evaluation you will get a very low amount and you don't need to do all of this work to calculate type b or measurement uncertainty comes from type b evaluation so in this lecture inshallah i will only consider type A evaluation and that's accepted according to the Eurochem guideline. Then we should calculate combined uncertainty where individual uncertainties from each source will be combined together to get overall uncertainty. And from type A evaluation, as I mentioned before, we will get pooled relative standard deviation and relative standard uncertainty. That will be combined together. Uncertainty combined will be equal to square root of pooled relative standard deviation square plus relative standard uh, uncertainty square and also if you are responsible for sampling you should calculate the uncertainty for sampling and should be added also to the combined uncertainty after you calculate the combined uncertainty calculate expanded uncertainty which is the overall uncertainty at confidence level 95 percentage uncertainty expanded equal to uncertainty combined multiplied to two coverage factor at confidence level 95 percentage in this lecture i try to make it very simple for you i try to point out or focus on how to calculate measurement uncertainty in a very easy way if you want to calculate measurement uncertainty and you have a difficulties in this but in the next lecture inshallah i will have full example about how to validate any method and how to calculate measurement uncertainty for the analytical measurement and that will be by using the excel sheet for calculation